what is up guys welcome back to another video today we're going to be doing a deck profile here for appliances now this deck was definitely something i didn't expect to build it was something that seemed a bit more uh, niche in a way and it definitely didn't see any sort of competitive play uh, nor p competitive potential given that firstly it is a machine deck so being a machine deck, you're just naturally vulnerable to any Cyber Dragon plays that your opponent might be playing, and so that's just something that's always going to be a downside. But that being said, appliances themselves do have this niche gimmick, which doesn't really go too extensively, and sure, once in a while it will be fun to catch a few people off guard, but ultimately it's not something that's so groundbreaking that it would shift the entire tide in a meta. Uh, but that being said though, this is something you can surely enjoy in a locals, and so here is my particular build. It didn't really cost too much to actually build this deck, I think it was about $15 and you could build a complete deck out of this, which is uh, what makes it so awesome for what it can do. But with that being said, do drop a like, share, comment and subscribe if you find this video enjoyable, it really does help out the channel, but with that all being said, let's get started. So to begin with the monsters, we're obviously going to be playing 3 copies of the socket roll. This is just a must at 3, basically the combo involves all 3 copies of it, so I will be showing a combo demonstration at the end of the video as well, just so that uh, everyone here can get a bit of an idea on this particular deck given that it's not as well known as a lot of others out there. That being said, we're also playing 3 copies of the copy buckle as well, essentially giving you 6 copies of socket roll in your entire deck. Definitely really amazing here, uh, but yeah, there's definitely some great combos to get you going. Ultimately, this deck is a link deck, so all you're really going for is a bunch of extenders, and in this case, well, it's best I just show you when that time comes. Next up, we have over here three copies of Breaker Bunkle. This card doesn't come up as often as others, however, it is still a great extender as well to go for. Being a level 1 machine with zero attack, it makes it for a really good wear after our target as well as a machine to target as well, so definitely really amazing there. You could still definitely make some plays regardless of whether or not this card is drawn because frankly most of your cards in your link deck are going to be link ones anyway so all you really need is that link one. Now for some extensions we are going to be playing here three copies of just the confit. It just special summons it's out, itself out for free so that's essentially what you want for a deck to link climb. Uh, then we have two copies of Parallel Exceed. I have considered a third copy, however, I don't really think it's necessary. I think two copies definitely does the job because all you really need to do is draw into one of them and you could still make uh, a lot of great plays here. And I'm also going to be playing here the one copy of Turbo Booster. Turbo Booster is a really interesting card. Uh, firstly, it's a machine. Secondly, it's a level one. And thirdly, it also can special summon itself out uh, pretty much for free as long as you normal summon this turn. So uh, definitely a fantastic choice to add to this deck. But overall, these are mainly the extenders that help you go for uh, link plays that go beyond just the link one. Next up, for a bit of spice, we're going to be playing here the one copy of the Code Breaker Zero Day. This is essentially the whole Code Breaker engine. Uh, definitely well worth playing in this particular deck. Uh, moving on, we're also going to be playing here three copies of Battle Fader. This is probably the one card that could actually go away in a sense. It does stop battles and prevent you delay things for a turn, and it is a level one that stays on the board that you could potentially use for a link summon. But that being said, though, there are better hand traps out there, so you could either put in Ash or uh, effect failure as well if that's something you want to go for it's just that battle fader kind of uh, does something that oddly works out better in this particular build and the last monster we're playing here is the uh, kaiju uh, pretty much the strongest one out there this one is mainly for the fact that it's a machine uh, but also the fact that uh, some of our link cards can actually punish the opponent for having uh, really high attack monsters. So that being said, 
having this particular kaiju is uh, a necessary option. So onto the spells, we're going to be playing three copies here of our Appliancer Electrical World. This card is essentially the card that starts you off. As long as you activate this, you can add one of your Appliancer cards from your deck. Uh, except for your field spell of course and that's any appliance a card so it does not have to be your monsters it can be your spells as well which is uh, absolutely amazing and then of course if you use your monsters as a link material you could also just bring one of them back as well from the graveyard to your hand absolutely amazing field spell really love it even the artwork looks absolutely amazing uh, so yeah definitely a really fantastic card one of my most favorite cards out there uh, but that being said, we're also playing Appliancer Reuse. This card is essentially just a monster reborn, but the only downside is it gets sent back to the bottom of the deck. But that's okay because if you're playing the whole socket roll focus, then you're constantly just going to be special summoning out more anyway. So I think this is definitely really amazing. And then the last of the cards we're playing is Appliancer Conversion. I'll probably drop this down to one copy and play something else in the deck because I find that this particular card doesn't work out as much or it just doesn't come up as much and normally I'm already either winning the game by the time I get to this particular card. So for the non appliance cards we're going to be playing the Where Art Thou uh, just to search out your level 1s of course. Uh, be careful though the 2000 damage is something that you have to be willing to take so make sure that you are uh, certain that you can make something out of it and then we're also going to be playing machine duplication as well uh, similar case it really synergizes well with the appliance of reuse returning your cards back into the deck and then being able to utilize uh, machine dupes to its uh, fullest potential so all of these are either ways to search out your cards or to extend the board as well now in terms of one-offs, we do have one of the appliance spells which is appliance test. Uh, this is something that is not a three of in the deck but uh, it is something that is definitely really, it's a bit gimmicky in a way, you don't really need to use it uh, but it does allow you to have a bit more flexibility if the time ever needs it to be and given that this card is easily searched out via your electrical world it's worth playing at least one copy next up we're playing the one for one for a bit of extension monster reborn just to further extend our plays uh, called by the grave obviously to deal with hand traps and we have the terraforming to get that fourth copy of our field spell as well as for trap cards we're adding in the metaverse which is essentially the fifth copy of the field spell but we're also going to be going for three copies of infinite impermanence as well uh, definitely a really nice card to go with especially if you're going first you want to slow down your opponent or rather if you're going second you want to slow down your opponent as much as possible having the infinite impermanence in the opening hand when you're going second is absolutely amazing because you don't really have too many disruptions in this deck this deck is more so focused on utilizing your link ones in an active manner rather than responding to your opponent earlier on before that. So with that being said, having the infinite impermanence is definitely going to be incredibly helpful in this case. Plus the fact that you could also say play it from the field uh, after it's been set and then lock out an entire column, that's more beneficial as well. It just means that your opponent can't really do anything if they attempt to say negate one of your link monsters effects so on to the extra deck we're going to be playing two copies here of appliance Celtopus. this is probably the best card in the deck itself aside from the field spell um, but yeah at least in the extra deck this is the best card we have uh, essentially just gets things going and it's usually the first card you're going for and then you follow up with one of your link ones now with the link ones, the best ones I play at two copies, so we're playing two copies of Laundry Dragon and we're also playing two copies of Propellion as well. Uh, both really amazing cards, um, basically just up to you on what you're actually looking for. That's the whole thing about this deck, it's so versatile and you can pretty much just choose whichever one you need. Uh, based on whichever situation you're in. As for the one-offs, we're going to be playing the Appliance of Vaculophant, we're also playing Kappa Scale, and we're playing the Dryer Drake. These are just the one-offs in the deck. Um, again, they're 
adding more versatility to the deck but you don't want to clog up your deck too much with the appliance cards and so i'm limiting them down to the one copy of each just so that it doesn't clog up too much there but still giving me options to extend in any sort of way i want of course it shouldn't be uh, a surprise that i'm playing the code breakers uh, given that you already saw the main deck uh, so these two cards great cards helps you extend and what you're mainly trying to go for here is the appaloosa uh, so you will need to somehow try to accumulate four cards or uh, four monsters on the board uh, to at least try to go for this basically just trying to maximize the attack of Appaloosa so that you get more negates out there That being said IP Mascarina to be able to do it during your opponent's turn is amazing But we also have Cross Sheep which uh, just works out in this particular deck as well And then we finally have the Link Karibo which is also just really good too So yeah that being said this is essentially the whole deck. I would say obviously Cross Sheep is not the mandatory card here. It's mainly for the two arrows that it points down. As you could switch this out for any other link too. Um, for example, you could just play the Nightmare cards a lot better in this particular situation. But um, mainly for me, it was the way the link markers pointed to that uh, benefited me more so in this particular deck. Now, I'm going to show you guys the uh, particular main combo with this uh, deck here, just so that you guys get an idea of how it's actually being played. But that being said, this deck definitely has uh, many different other builds as well you could potentially uh, try out with it. I have seen builds where people have gone for, yes, the Code Breakers, but they have extended into the Phantom Knight engine, allowing them to pretty much search out their... Uh, Phantom Knight's Fog Blade, which gives you essentially three negates out on the board as well. So pair that up with the uh, set in permanences, and you could definitely do a lot of uh, disruption uh, with a deck that really isn't known to be uh, disruptive as is, even though it's kind of like a third party thing. It's just that the Phantom Knights do synergize incredibly well with this particular deck here. Now the combo is incredibly easy, it's mainly just utilizing uh, two cards in your hand and that is simply these two cards here. So let's say your opening hand is these two, that's great and all, but let's say you only draw into one of these. Well here's the thing, as long as you have your electrical world you can pretty much just search out any of the other ones out there. And same case, if you don't have your electrical world, at least we have the terraforming as well to be able to search it out. So just as an example, let's say we're in this situation where we only have the one socket roll. And let's say we only had terraforming. Sure, this is going to be very vulnerable to ash. But most of the time, people will want to see what terraforming will draw into. So uh, that being said, they're not going to necessarily know. So let's say this was your opening hand. You would play your terraforming, which will search out your electrical world. Activate your electrical world, which will search for your coffee buckle. And this is essentially enough for you to go off with the combo. You're going to normal summon your socket roll. Special summon out your copy buckle to copy the socket roll. Socket roll will then um, apply its own effect, allowing you to special summon out another socket roll from the deck. Right off the bat there, that's three cards already out on the board. Now in this particular case, it's completely up to you as to what you want to do with this particular play. Uh, for example, let's say we wanted to go for the Celtopus, we could do that. Otherwise, let's say I wanted to try and go for maybe the Codebreaker engine. That's also great as well. But let's say I take the two socket roll and we link that away. Now it's very important that we use two of the socket rolls. Copy buckle is also something that you could potentially keep as well. But at the very least, you want to be sending off one of your socket rolls. The reason why I'm sending off two is mainly because if your opponent DD crows one of them, at least you can bring back the other. So in this particular case, you're going to bring out your Celtopus. And then from that, you're going to use Electrical World to bring back one of them. And that's the thing. If you choose, if you want to bring back one, your opponent's going to banish the other. 
So you want to at least get two of the same cards in there as well. The minute Copy Buckle leaves the field and goes to the graveyard, it's no longer considered socket roll. It's only going to be this uh, while it's on the field. Its effect is null once it goes into the graveyard. So that being said, you want to keep that on the board. So you add this back to your hand and now you can use socket roll's effect to special summon itself out as long as you control any appliance or monster in this case it could be either your copy buckle or your seltopos so we're going to link these two away and this will allow us to go for our code breaker so you go for your virus swordsman and then with virus swordsman you essentially are able to then get out your zero day uh, to a zone that another points to because these two are already co-linked uh, that's pretty much what makes Seltopus uh, such a good card because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to link these two up and this will allow us to go for our uh, Virus Berserker and then of course Virus Berserker uh, then essentially allows us to then special summon back out our two cards over here as well and with this what you could technically go for is you could just go for an Appaloosa and just sit on that honestly because that's uh, definitely really uh, strong just to start off with. Uh, I want you guys to remember that this is just starting off with two cards. The fact that you're able to have this particular board uh, with just two cards is absolutely amazing because you still have three cards in your hand So let's say those three cards are filled up with hand traps or more extenders in this particular deck Think about where you could actually go with this here. This is Basically just a simple combo that I feel like everyone just needs to know and You don't even have to go for Appaloosa as well. It's just knowing how to utilize uh, the cards in the deck at least just two cards in the deck and that's essentially all you need to really play this deck it's incredibly simple but at the same time because of the many diverse effects of all the appliance and link monsters you could really push this deck to uh, just a completely different level uh, not in the sense that it's just really broken or uh, really powerful anything like that but more so for the fact that this deck just has uh, so many pseudo big brain plays which makes it incredibly fun for anyone who's actually craving that uh, mental challenge of going for each intricate play that will get you towards just a really tiny goal and it can just deviate the minute you decide on one tiny action so yeah with that being said i do hope you guys enjoyed this particular deck profile i find this to be an incredibly enjoyable deck um, but yeah definitely leave me your builds as well i want to really see what uh, you guys do to make use out of this particular deck or engine really uh, as appliances uh, but yeah with that being said thanks for joining me today i hope you all have a fantastic day i'll see you all next time